Okay, we're going to look at a third method of finding volumes of revolution called the shell method. Now, if you haven't done it yet, I would definitely back up and watch the disk method and the washer method. Okay, as far as the shell method goes, first of all, what is a shell? And what a shell is, it's just a cylinder with a hole in the middle of it. And you can use this to estimate volumes of revolution as well. Now, what we'll do is, just like we've done in the past where we summed up a series of disks or a series of washers, this time we'll sum up a series of shells. But to find the volume, you'll first of all need to find the volume of a single shell. So let's do this. Suppose you started with a single shell that looked like this. Now, right now it's wrapped up in the form of a circle. Suppose that you take a pair of scissors out, this thing was made out of, say, tin or paper, and you cut it and expanded it. Now, when you expanded it, it would look something like this. If you just unrolled it, it would wind up looking like this. Uh, so what you'll have is a solid. So again, just cut a line right through the middle of it. And when you do that, oh, put it like this. <clears throat> if you cut it right straight through here and then expanded it, it would look like that. Okay, now what will happen is this will be the length of it. This is a solid rectangular slab, and it's going to have a length and a width and a height. So what will happen is this side right here will be the length. So that's going to be the length of it. This is going to be the height of it running from here to here. And then finally it's going to have a thickness, which will be this part here we'll call it T. So it's got a length, a height, and a thickness. Now, the volume of that shell is going to be exactly the same thing as the volume of this slab. So let's find the volume of this. So in this case, um, the volume of the shell is just going to be the length times the width times the height of this thing. So it will be the length times the height. times the thickness. And that will give you the volume of that slab, which is exactly the same thing as the volume of the shell. Now, to find the length, you have to remember that this length here is exactly the same thing as the circumference is here. So if you were to do this, uh, if you were to find the radius of this thing, and suppose the radius goes from here to here. Now, the radius of a circle is 2 pi r. So the radius of this circle will give you the length of this slab. So this thing would be equal to 2 pi r. So the length is 2 pi r. Now what you can do then is putting that back in your formula. The volume then would change to this. The length is 2 pi times the radius. That's the circumference. Then you've still got the height and the thickness. So the height times the thickness. So the thickness of the thing. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> now what that is, that's going to be the volume of a single shell. So if we wanted to take the volume of additional shells, we would just add these together. But just remember that formula. So 2 pi times the radius times the height times the thickness. Now with that in mind, we'll go back and, and look at a specific example. So let's do this. Um, starting with this example, suppose we had this. Just here is some function. In this case, it's a straight line, but it could really be just any function that you wanted to. And what we're going to do is roll this thing around the x-axis and sweep out a volume. So when you do that, it'll look something like this. Uh, it'll be in the shape of a cone, but we want to find what's the volume of this. But rather than using disks or washers like we have in the past, we're going to use shells. So let's put a single shell in there and see what it looks like. So if you had a single shell inside this thing, it would look something like this. Now again, what we're going to do, just like we've done in the past where we started with a single disc and then took another and another and another, you'll have a series of concentric shells. And what those will look like will be something like this. If you added a second shell, it would be like this. A third shell would be like this. And just add up the volumes of all of these concentric shells and you'll have the volume that you're looking for. So let's look at this specifically and go back to the formula now and find out what a formula for this thing would actually look like. And what it would be would be this. Now let's start with that formula that we had before. The volume of a single shell looks like this. Uh, so the volume of a single shell is going to be equal to, and this is a single shell, 
Well, remember, it was 2 pi times the radius times the height and then finally times the thickness. So the radius times the height times the thickness. Now let's look at our picture and see what each one of these things look like. The radius is going to be the distance from here up to here. So that's going to be the radius to the center. So there's the radius of it right there. So the radius goes from here up to here. So uh, the height of it, well, let's just go ahead and put these in as we go. That's going to give you the volume then would be equal to 2 pi times, and you've got the radius, uh, Now where the height of it's going to be, that's going to be this distance from here to here. So that's going to be the height. So you've got the radius times the height. So there's the height of it. And then finally the thickness of it will be this thickness right here. So this distance from here to here. And that distance from here to here. Now on our little thing it's going to look like this. That's some small change. It's parallel to the y-axis. So that's going to be the thickness, which will be some differential y. So it's, since it's parallel to the y-axis, it's actually a small change in y. So we'll write this one as dy. Now what that's going to be, that's going to be the volume of a single shell. If you wanted to find the volume of several shells, and again, like a second shell and a third shell and so on, uh, then all you'll do is take the summation of this. So if you took the summation of all of these, we'll put it in red here, uh, we'll put a summation sign and summed all these things up, then you would have an integral like we have in the past and the volume of the resulting cone would look like this. So the volume would be equal to uh, 2, actually we'll put the integral of 2 pi times the radius times the height and the whole thing would be dy. Now again, the 2 pi is a constant, so you can move it out in front. So the formula that you'll normally see in a book would look something like this. It'll be 2 pi times the integral. Uh, and then you'll have the radius times the height, and then dy. Now when you integrate it, you're actually going to be integrating it this way. You're going to go from A to some B up here at the end point, and you're going to integrate it in this direction. So what the integral would look like if you went around a horizontal axis would be from some Y equals A to some Y equals B. So what this is, this is a formula for finding volumes using the shell method going around the x-axis or going around the horizontal axis. And everything will be in, ter so in terms of y. So if you go around the x-axis, put it all in terms of y. Now let's take a look at a vertical one, what it would look like. It's going to be almost exactly the same thing. You'll still start with the same formula, except that it'll be a little bit different and you'll have this. Is in this case, um, this time the radius is going to go from here to here. So the radius would look like this, from here out to here. So that's going to be the radius. Uh, this is going to be the height, but this time you're going to put it in terms of x, so that's going to be the height, and then the thickness of it will be this little piece right in here. But that thickness is going to be dx this time. So it'll be some small change in x because it's parallel to the x-axis. So what that does to the formula, it makes it look like this. The volume will be equal to, now it's still going to be the same thing, you'll still have the 2 pi, then you'll have the integral, but this time when you integrate it, this is going to be a, and this is going to be b over here, and you'll integrate it going this direction. So this is going to go from x equals a to x equals b, and it's still going to be some radius that you'll have to determine. So radius uh, times the height um, times the thickness, but the thickness is, in this case, dx. So it'll be dx. So what you get this time, if you 
use the shell method to go around the y-axis or to go around a vertical axis, everything will be in terms of x. So you've got a couple of different options. Now to summarize it, let's take a look at one last thing. If you were to summarize this, it would look something like this. Uh, if you go around the x-axis or a horizontal axis, put everything in terms of y. If you go around the y-axis or a vertical axis, so again this would be horizontal, this one's going to be vertical right here, so if you went around a vertical, down here if you went around a vertical axis, um, then put everything in terms of x. If you go around a horizontal axis, put everything in terms of y. Now, the hard part of this when you work them out is always going to be determining this, is trying to figure out, okay, what is the radius, and how do you express it in terms of y, and what is the height, and how do you express it in terms of y. Then if you did this problem, you're going to put everything in terms of x, but you'll still have the same thing. What is the radius, and what is the height? And that's the tricky part of the problem. If you can get the radius and get the height, then it, you can just run through the integral by itself. So anyway, that's just kind of an overview of the shell method. Now this is part one, so in part two and some other videos, we'll look at how to specifically use these to solve some problems.